So in our cloud, we have an Oracle ATP database over here. And if you go to the service console of this database, under the administration part, you'll be able to access the wallet, which is what you need in order to log into the database. So you want to download it to your machine, which you already did. And this would allow me now to take this Visual Builder instance and connect it to this ATP instance. So by the way, on this um, instance, I already have live apps, uh, which is something you should take into account. If you go into the settings of your Visual Builder application, over here you can see we're currently using the tenant database and I can switch it to use another database. This can be a regular Oracle database which I'll connect to with JDBC or an ATP database. If I'm connecting to ATP, I need to upload my zip file, which is, um, the zip file is the wallet file. So I'm gonna pick up my wallet file that I downloaded and then I need to change or oh, specify the password that I gave for this wallet and also specify uh, which admin user I'm using for my uh, ATP database and the password for that. This would allow Visual Builder to create Visual Builder related users in that database. When I click next, we actually uh, go over your Visual Builder instance and show you a list of applications that are currently there. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a backup of your applications because we're going to remove them. Okay, so choose the apps that you want to us to back up for you. And um, another thing that you would want to do before that is probably export all the data from those applications to have a backup if you're using business objects. All right, so I'm going to just choose two of those applications uh, to back up um, and Again, we're going to warn you over here about what we're doing exactly. And then we're going to download the zip files for those um, apps that you chose to backup. And then we basically transition you to use ATP. Uh, you'll go into Visual Builder, your apps won't be there anymore. So you might want to import one of the apps that you backed up. For example, I'm going to import this chart sample over here. Um, so let's import it. Um, maybe I'll want to bring it back with the same name that it had before. So make sure to update that as well. Um, so we'll do it like that. And once you import it, you'll basically just have a copy of this application in there. Again, you can bring in then a data that you backed up for your business object using the data manager for the business object. In my case, there's the import, oh sorry, the export here was export with data. So I can also do um, the stage and publish of the application using the data from the development instance, um, which in my case is fine, but in your case, you might want to actually bring in the live data. All right, so we did a stage, we do a publish, and now we have the application up the running like before. So the interesting thing to note now is if we go to SQL Developer, and I have here SQL Developer hooked up to the same database, and you saw that what I did here before is I fetched all the users. We had 44 users in this database before. Now that we installed the ATP, uh, so now that we installed VB and hooked it up to this ATP, if we'll re-execute this query once we log in again, you're going to see we have more than these 44 users, okay? because VB just created a couple of users for me as well. So let's run this command and you'll see that now we have 47, okay, um, including three uh, users for VB. I'm gonna pick up this last username and copy it. And I'm going to show you which tables this user has inside it. So again, this is a schema inside the Oracle database with a specific name. Uh, VB generates those um, randomly. And um, this is actually the username for my live instance of the application. So if I go and I query the list of tables it has, you would see that we have locations and employees and departments. If you go back into your Visual Builder instance and we'll go back into the application we have here and we look at the business object, you will see we'll have business object for the same three tables. Okay, so this is kind of the mapping. And again, this specific user is the user used for my live instance. There's another user there that is my development instance. So the next thing I can do is I can actually go over and query the data inside uh, that table. So let's modify this query to query everything from the employee table in there. Okay. 
and um, maybe this is not very clear. So maybe instead of querying everything, let's just query the name and salary fields. Um, would give us a nicer display here. Okay, and you can see basically the data over here for employees and their salary. Basically, what we have in the business object in the live instance. So one thing we can do beyond just querying and reporting from using SQL is we can even do an update on the data. So let's, for example, give all our employees a salary raise and let's update the salary to have 500 more. So before that, you saw a lot of those guys had a salary ending in a zero, zero. And now that we did the update and if we run the query again, you'll see that um, now the salary are higher over here. Okay, so don't forget to also commit the changes if you're doing it from here. Okay, and now that you committed the changes, you can go back into Visual Builder. Okay, and you can see this is the development instance of the data. Okay, so the data still shows the 2000, for example, for Jane and 3000 for Shelly. If I'll switch over to look at the live data, and you can see now the data is actually adding 500 to them. So this is because we updated the data from outside.